Well, it's autumn in North America, so I went apple picking with my niece Evelyn. You'll notice I have dark black hair now. It's because I'm playing Gaston in my high school musical, like I did in middle school. And this time around, I thought I would try to look a little more like the movie version. So you'd think that picking apples with a five-year-old girl would be a lovely experience, full of smiling and laughter, and sunshine and helping. There's actually a lot more butt punching than I would have expected. Hey, hey, let me get that. Justice! Trust me, her face recovered. So picking apples is fun, but it's the bottom rung of fun, really. You've got to make your own fun, like finding apples that look like buds. Or stomping a few fallen apples of the very worst variety of apples ever grown, Red Delicious. If your favorite apple is Red Delicious, you should get out and actually try a real apple, because never before has an apple been named more deceptively than the mealy, barely edible Delicious. My brother Mickey was there too, to carry the 20 pound bag of apples and look wistfully at autumnal ponds. And to join in some pumpkin chunking, Mick was pretty good at it. Fosroda! I chose a much heavier pumpkin because I didn't think things through all the way. Billy Corgan! You see, I picked a pumpkin that was too heavy for the launching device. I was hoping for 1993 Smashing Pumpkins, and I ended up with 2000 Smashing Pumpkins. Zero smash, and just a little rolling. Last time I went apple picking, there were thousands of bees and wasps to deal with, and I liked to try to tie my food oddity to a theme, so I was disappointed to encounter not a single wasp. Which was a shame, really, because the oddity I was eating today was a Japanese wasp cookie. These almost mythical cookies were very difficult to obtain. In Japanese, and please forgive my bad pronunciation, they're known as Jibash Simbe. The story goes that wasp hunters trap digger wasps, which are boiled, dried, and added to a rice cracker mix. These cookies are stamped out and pretty much made only available to a local market. You can't buy them on Amazon in America, but if you create a Japanese Amazon account, you can buy them. But they won't ship them out of Japan. So I had to establish a Japanese address, which took time and money and official documents, I'm not kidding, just to accept delivery of wasp cookies. Then I had to have them shipped from this address to my address in the United States and hope they'd somehow get through customs. Oh, and you can't buy a couple of wasp cookies. I've got a giant box full of them. So one of these days I'm going to have a wasp cookie party and see who's brave enough to take a bite. Having reached the age of 15, I know that I'll eat absolutely anything I have a chance to, with the exception of a few pets, some endangered animals, and human meat. Unless I'm trapped in the Andes. I'll try any food, from anywhere, at any time. I thought it might be fun to see if my niece Evelyn shared this trait. But first, I'd need to be able to describe them for her. It smells like almost the powder that's used to make ramen noodles. I mean the flavor packet. Sweeter than savory, but somehow similar. They're very crisp. The taste isn't unpleasant. Very, very slightly sweet. You can feel each and every wasp pop between your teeth, but they don't taste like much. Wasp crackers taste like fortune cookies with dirty raisins. Dirty, flavorless raisins. I keep thinking about wasp stingers as I chew. Now to see if Evelyn will try it. My loyal brother Mickey's game. Evelyn, not so much. Mick breaks off a bit with the wasp in it, but she just doesn't want to chew on an insect. That's a no from the five-year-old. She's fine with cider and donuts, but she's not into eating wasps. Ah well, it was still a fun trip to the apple orchard. I got a big wasp cookie party to plan. Keep your eyes open, an invitation could be on its way to you.